Hello, everyone. My name is Oksana. It's Road to AdWords, Weekly AdWords Insider, the 27th. We deliver the news about the creation of our project, AdWords. And as usual, Tokugawa-san, could you please open the session? Okay, thank you, Oksana. Uh, hello, this is Hiro Tokugawa. Uh, now, uh, continuing with our gourmet in Edo. Edo. Now, um, well, soba, I think, is fairly well known. Uh, and then and then sushi is probably the most famous, followed by tempura. And then there's shabu shabu or teppanyaki. But these are after uh, post Tokugawa Japan, you could say. They they all start in Asia, you know. Uh, you see, um, the the Tokugawa Japan was a Buddhist, a pretty strictly Buddhist country. So uh, you they they didn't have so much livestock, uh, only chickens. And then uh, game, game meat, uh, like uh, wild boars and deer were okay. Uh, but rabbits, no. So uh, with a boar, they called them uh, Yamakujina, whale of the mountain, uh, pretending that they are not mammals. Okay, so people thought that, thought that whales were a, a very big fish. And then uh, with rabbits, uh, again, it, it is four-legged, uh, therefore uh, 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 mammals closer to human beings. So uh, you're not supposed to kill them. So uh, they were considered birds because of their ears. So, uh, so, so there is no eating beef uh, officially. Uh, and then in Okinawa, because the uh, culinary culture is close to that, oh, no, not in Okinawa, but in Kagoshima, uh, the culinary culture is was closer to uh, Okinawa, so they ate pork. But in Edo, uh, basically, uh, what you what you so pork there is no pork or beef, uh, and so therefore sukiyaki, shabu shabu, teppanyaki. These are uh, after the, these were invented after Tokugawa times. Uh, so and then um, what's very Edo specific? Uh, what people think of uh, food from Edo, and then one is soba, and the other is uh, unagi, kabayaki, eel. But eels are not, as far as I could see, uh, not very popular uh, all over the world. So, and, and also as a Japanese dish, because of this uh, not so nice image of eel dishes, uh, probably it hasn't gone around the world yet, but it, it is uh, very delicious. I like it very much. Um, probably the most famous uh, eel dish outside of Japan is the, um, uh, is a London dish. As you see, they could, they, in the past, they could catch eel in the River Thames. So uh, they would chop up the eel and then uh, put it together with jelly and then eat it as usual uh, with vinegar. So it doesn't sound so attractive. And the, uh, and the photography is even, the photo, photographic image is even less appetizing. Yes, but now, uh, you see, now, Unagi eel became very uh, common in Edo because, as I think I mentioned at the very early uh, weeks of the uh, Edoverse Insider, is that Edo was created uh, out of the sea. The first thing Tokugawa Ieyas did upon entering the city uh, was to bury, uh, the, bury the sea and create land. But uh, natura naturally, at the beginning, that would be only marshland, a lot of water left. And then there, eels grew. And uh, so it became a very important source of protein, uh, animal protein, uh, for all the uh, construction workers of Edo. And then so uh, that, that's how it became very common. And, uh, and Edo was also a city of rivers and canals, so uh, you could catch plenty. Yes, eels were caught here. Uh, and at the beginning, uh, all the eels uh, had a bamboo stick uh, well, I mean, uh, st stuck right through its body, I mean, uh, from its mouth. So the uh, eel would look like it swallowed a bamboo stick. Uh, but And then eventually, uh, people started to tear open, tear it open, and so uh, you can, and, and then grill it. So it became very thin and easier to cook. Uh, yes. And the sauce is soy sauce uh, mixed with meeting, which is sweet sake. And, and uh, when you grill soy sauce, it smells very good until it starts really burning, <laughs> which professional cooks don't do. Uh, so, uh, well, 
grilled corn maize with uh, soy sauce is a favorite of Japanese festivities in Oda Jinja. And it's, it, is re- it has a really attractive smell. And the same with uh, grilled eel, kabayaki. And uh, there, there, there are episodes in uh, Bakugo, uh, the, the, what I call the sit-down comedians of Edo, where poor people would go with a bowl of rice uh, next to an eel grilling stand and just absorb the smoke coming out and eat the rice uh, with that smell. So it's, it's, it's like, a, well, how should I, well, it's like a putting a piece of bread uh, in a chamber where you're smoking ham or something and eat it just with the smell and without the ham. So, uh, and also eels are rich in vitamin and uh, they were believed to be, and probably actually are uh, good for the summer uh, when everybody is uh, overwhelmed by the heat. So, so it is very popular in the summer uh, still in Japan, but this is also a custom that started in uh, mid Tokugawa times. Uh, and yeah, and so you see, and in the past, and and for all the tourists who would visit Edo City, uh, unagi, the eel, kabayaki would be uh, one of the uh, things that they were looking forward to, as people believed, and all the scribblers in Edo would write about eel caught in Edo, and this is supposed to be the best in Japan. So, so it was a favorite for all the tourists who would come into Edo. Okay, so, uh, uh, and I think uh, that would be enough for this week. So uh, thank you very much, Oksana. But part yes. one of uh, Jab of Eel. Oh, oh, it's part one. Okay, thank you very much. Oh my God, so such a long story for Eel. <laughs> yes, yes, yeah, it's a long fish. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, and next, uh, Jenny, could I, can I invite you to our con- conversation? Sure, thank you, Oksana. Hello, everybody. Uh, I'd like to update something to you. Uh, currently, we discuss how we can maximize the value of land NFT. So it's it's just from my personal opinion, but I think the value of NFT, especially land, is composed of two, two elements. One is uh, space value, and the other one is, I think, economic value. So basically, the space value should be uh, more you know, uh, elegant and higher with a uh, high visual and high UX and high UI. It's quite easy to imagine, I think. So if let's say, maybe some of you have already seen uh, the space uh, just came from Meta, Meta, Meta company. It was like, uh, you know, uh, I, I think Virtua Fighter 2 or Virtua Fighter 1. And then uh, the Mark Zuckerberg took his photo in this, you know, uh, low quality space. And many of the investors was surprised to see, wow, this is Meta, is it really? Because of the, you know, uh, very, how to say, I, 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 I'm not willing to say this is, you know, crazy, crazy quality or something, but it was not expected quality. So uh, just after the uh, disclosure, uh, Mark Zuckerberg say, said again that he is creating a new space which is more high quality. Why he mentioned that is because uh, he's always taking care of the value of space because the space of value should be based on the high vision and quality, right? So we have to focus on that. I mean, the quality and the UI and the UX, especially frame rate plus, uh, you know, user experience. Uh, this is one thing. And the other thing is uh, economic value, which is, uh, you know, how, what we can do in this uh, new space. For example, we can put some advertising. Maybe we can create our own marketplace in which uh, a lot of users can sell this land and a lot of users can buy this land. And then uh, we are about to start, uh, you know, some kind of campaign. For example, if the user has this district, like, uh, uh, like for example, certain areas, like 20 units or 30 units or 40 units, uh, it's still under discussion. And then if, let's say, some user has uh, already 19 units of required 20 units, then I think the rest of the one unit should be higher, right? Because if they buy the rest of one unit, then they can complete these 20 units. And then if the user complete this uh, 20 units can get some kind of incentive or like new tokenomics, something like that. It's a kind of, you know, simple gamify. Also, after we complete this space, maybe we can implement our new gaming application. We always, you know, have, uh, you know, a uh, meeting every Tuesday at night, JST with uh, Seguin team and of course, Tokawa-san and Dominic. 
and then how we can proceed to implement our gaming application. Of course, we cannot complete and uh, create you know, the perfect game at the very beginning. It takes maybe one year or one year and a half, but uh, every quarter or like uh, you know, every four months or five months, we can disclose our updates, I guess. Uh, oh, I see. Uh, this this kind of ga gaming should be variable for us. And then if we want to get some you know, new coin or new token, then we should be behaving like this, something like that. So uh, we, can, we, can, we can provide some kind of principles and basic, basic manual in this gaming application. And then, of course, we focus on the Daimyo project area, which is a super important area for you, for all of you. And also, uh, always, as Dominic mentioned, uh, the, the Nishinoma area is, is going to be art complex. And then this art complex is very easy for all of you, including us, to imagine that what we can do, what, we, what kind of uh, ecosystem we can create here. Because art complex is an art complex. We can show our own NFT and then we can promote our own NFT. And those types of NFTs are going to be high liquidity in our marketplace. So for technical side, we are about to launch uh, the marketplace for certain agents. So that uh, I think a lot of uh, people who are interested in you know, participating in our lands can buy and sell with a, a healthy price. It's not like you know, lower price. Because uh, uh, I guess that NF lands NFTs floor price is our first sale price. So this is a floor, no, no more lower basically. So uh, we can create and we can add another, another value to uh, lands NFT so that those types of lands NFTs value is gonna be more increasing. So I hope to show this ecosystem and also I hope to show uh, this new marketplace to all of you as soon as possible. Thank you so much. That's enough from, uh, from my side today. Yes, thank you very much, Jenny. It sounds very exciting. You gave me fine and gained two yep. points and getting profit <laughs> from it. Yes, yes, yes. That's quite important. Yeah. Yes. Right. Also, Mitsushi, could you please continue our session today? Hello. Uh, these days, I analyze a lot of metaverse related projects because a lot of corporations made announcement on new metaverse projects. So I'm sort of trying to analyze in current trend. I see that there are three types of metaverse uh, these days. So today my topic is a little bit uh, sort of generic and abstract, no, uh, it was specific. First of all, a corporate oriented uh, metaverse and secondly, content oriented metaverse and three creator influencer oriented metaverse. So corporate oriented metaverse is that that company is developing their own metaverse. For example, Meta is developing their own metaverse and also uh, uh, Epic Games is developing a Fortnite uh, worldview metaverse. So company is trying to emphasize their own corporate color and their own uh, sort of corporate strategies. Uh, as a tool, they develop metaverse and trying to acquire users. It's, it seems a little bit centralized uh, platform. Uh, we call it closed metaverse. So there's a, a dispute between closed metaverse versus open metaverse. Closed metaverse is sort of one company is organizing the metaverse. So the server is uh, supervised by one company and you cannot use one avatar into different uh, web browser services. But open metaverse is that you can use a same item, same uh, sort of uh, avatar in different kind of metaverse operated by different companies. So this is what we call open metaverse. Uh, so currently like corporate uh, oriented metaverse seems a little bit close to metaverse. But I don't know, maybe in the future, maybe Epic Games will allow their users to use the same avatar in different kind of metaverse to develop by different companies. That kind of uh, uh, future will, will be possible. Uh, I'm sure that Edubus should be uh, categorized as the open, open metaverse services. Maybe a Katana NFT or a Samurai NFT used in Edubus could be used in a different uh, metaverse services in a different paradigm. That, that's one uh, thing that I'm, I'm thinking right now. Secondly, a content-oriented metaverse is that Edubus is the example of content-oriented oriented metaverse. There's one content uh, that uh, composes the, the the identity of metaverse. So for example, Edubus has a foundation, foundation. it's a different from uh, corporate structures. So content comes first. Uh, maybe uh, Dobutsu no Mori, uh, it's, it's developed by Nintendo, but I think it's content is important for uh, Dobutsu no Mori rather than corporate color of Nintendo. So I think those kind of uh, content oriented metaverse will also be one of the mainstream services. Uh, in the near future. Finally, influencer and creator oriented metaverse. A lot of uh, musician or uh, manga artists have their own community 
uh, in metaverse services. That's what we call content, uh, so influencer-oriented metaverse. Those influencers and artists already have a huge fan base, so it's very easy for them to uh, gain users in their own metaverse services and develop their own community bonds through a, a, you know, a cyber world. So I think these are three main categories of uh, metaverse right now. I think Edovars is positioned in very uniquely right now in the market. Edovars has strong content, very conspicuous, different from other worldview. The period of er Edo and Samurai and Katana, those symbols are very easy to understand for a lot of people, including, of course, including foreigners as well. Uh, so I think uh, in terms of marketing and PR strategies, it's very important to differentiate Edovars from other competitors. But I think there are many ways to appeal to wider range of audience. So I will continue to analyze uh, other metaverse services and try to find best sort of strategies to win this uh, age of competition. Uh, it's short today, but that's all from me. Thanks. Thank you very much, Mr. Shi, and thank you for a very educative talk. I've learned a lot from you today as well. And uh, next, Dominique, could you please sum up our session today? Okay. Um, the first read that I just I want to do some uh, housekeeping stuff about Zeni Harvest. Um, I we uh, extend the deadline to harvest uh, Zeni's uh, to the uh, land holder in uh, Daimyo uh, Koji District now uh, to the end of uh, August uh, because you know, still there are people are a little confused about you know, how they should just manage the, uh, uh, manage to harvest because there's some of the case uh, of uh, mobile phones the iPhone will be no problem but um, um, the Android uh, it, it's a, it might be a little difficult just to harvest then and um, and then uh, what we want to recommend is that they just uh, people should just uh, 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 remake uh, or just recover the uh, MetaMask in uh, and personal computers, and then uh, you should just harvest on them. And and at least that um, it doesn't take much time. Um, please um, uh, finish uh, finalizing the Zen harvest. It's going to be a, a a little fortune for you in the future. And then um, uh, uh, land NFT. As um, Jenny mentions, um, um, it's going to be uh, it's going to be a really big values just for the economic term. Uh, we are really uh, just now building uh, all the uh, 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 daimyo mansions we called, and that already design was established. And that we're going to do some of the economic activities like some business or some uh uh show time uh, show uh, business or maybe i think some of the sort of shopping business and a lot of uh different kind of business that I think we can make it uh in the diamond mansion in the futures so um we can um, uh, we can uh, and also you can just get money and you can get some of the uh, zenies uh, uh from the from the business in the diamond mansion and then uh, you can just get some dividends just as a land shareholders and we still don't know that what kind of um, uh, return that and that we can just uh, we, we can we can get. But at least this is a game five concept, and then um, um, uh, I think we can enjoy some of the reward uh, from the business in the in the metaverse and then in the edoverse. Yeah, um, and that's going to be um, very exciting in the future. But in the short term, um, we have to enjoy some of the a very simple game. Um, in a, in the in the um, uh, we're gonna just create uh, the katana NFT, and then uh, you can just exchange the katana NFT. That is very beautiful, and then uh, and also uh, we will launch uh, the the prototype uh, avatar, and, and also I think that you can you can just find that the, the bunch of number of the uh, uh, the prototype the avatars uh, uh, that uh, that we're gonna just. Uh, uh, showing to to everybody uh, probably in September or October, and then uh, you will see some of the landscape of the Edo, uh, the core city uh, of uh, Edo landscape in by the end of this this year, and then uh, and also we're gonna um, um, uh, we're gonna launch some uh, uh, we're gonna uh, show sh uh, show you some idea about the what kind of game uh, we you can enjoy uh, in the in the Edo city in the future. And that's also very 
interesting for me too. But um, uh, why are just uh, uh, people in Japan actually you know, taking a little hol- the summer holidays just during the Obon season, we call it. Um, our team never stops that to create this uh, Aerobus uh, hold ecosystem. And we have to, uh, we are now... Uh, uh, really rushed to create the you whole know, construction of uh, Edo castles and also uh, Daimyo mansions in uh, Daimyo Court District and also the Nishinomaru District. Um, and also, uh, uh, we are, we are uh, now discussing with um, uh, the many people about uh, our ecosystem, uh, the tokenomics, uh, because uh, we already long deployed the Zenis and Kobans, how we can utilize Zeni and Kobans, and we have to really uh, the, the just consider and then we have to just fix the idea about things. Um, um, and then um, um, uh, I hope we will see some of the uh, real uh, ideas about our game system, uh, game uh, game by game uh, contents, probably end of the, uh, t- toward the end of the year. So uh, we're still just, in a, everything is under, under construction, but uh, I think uh, you will see one by one, and then you will see some of the more realistic Edubars feature um, the very soon. So um, I hope that the people can just enjoy it anyway. Thank you. They will, I'm sure. Thank you very much, Dominique. And thank you everyone for speaking today and for listening to, to this session. I will meet you next week. Goodbye.